Hello, hello Aries. Welcome to your October reading. So I am hearing release and recalibrate, especially in the realm of how you relate to other people. We've got an eclipse happening in Libra, your opposite sign on October 2nd. So whenever you're watching this reading, that energy proliferates for the next six months. So <laughs> you're not late, you're right on time to be noticing what is asking to be moved out of the way so that you can invite in this fresh start. It's like there is a fresh start implied, but there is a release that needs to be done. It's kind of like if I'm going to buy a whole new wardrobe, metaphorically speaking, I need to create some room. So what aspect, if I need a, this spirit's really going with this metaphor, okay? And if I need this whole new wardrobe, it's because there, the version of me that was here before doesn't really suit me anymore. Lots of puns here. <laughs> so it's, I got to make room. I got to make room if I want to invite in the whole new me, right? This whole new way of relating to other people. And Spirit's showing me uh, a few scenarios when it comes to how you relate to other people. This is the house of one-on-one -on -one partnerships. So of course this is going to apply for a lot of you to romantic partners, but this is also the house of negotiations. It's the house of mentor, mentee, you know, coach and, and athlete, whatever, are one-on-one -on -one relationships, balances of power, um, exchanges of power, give and take. And whenever the sun is in your seventh house, anybody's seventh house, there's a lot of activity. So you can expect a lot of action that the whole world is going to be able to witness. Like, oh, you met somebody or, oh, you left somebody or, oh, you started this big new thing and you're letting everybody know about it. This is a house of action. Okay. So eyes up, eyes and heart open. Let's get into October, Aries. Thank you, spirit, loved ones, guides, for the Aries listening to this reading. My Aries sun, moon, rising, and dominant people, spirit, want to know what's showing up and what you most want your Aries people to know about it for their highest good, always and only for their highest good, spirit. What kind of themes are showing up for Aries? and anything they need to know from the past as it pertains to the present. Wow. And the unfolding future. Okay. <laughs> it's like um, oracular verbal diarrhea. <laughs> All right, let's go Aries for October. Spirit, how is the past affecting the, the present and the unfolding future? We want to know the pertinent information so that Aries can make the moves that bring them into joy, abundance, fulfillment, make their wishes come true, spirit. What does Aries need to know in the month of October for their highest good spirit to be able to step into fulfillment, abundance, ease, creativity, flow, love? What kind of climate is Aries working with? And what do you want them to know or do with it for their highest good? Perfect. Aries sun, Aries moon, Aries rising and dominant people. My first house dominant people. Thank you. Wow. Um, spirit never ceases to amaze me. Okay, so release and recalibrate. You can see your cards right there. <laughs> Don't got to be a tarot reader to know that the death card is all about release. Um, okay, so first things first, you are coming through as the Knight of Cups, Aries. The Knights are in transition. They are neither where they've been before and they're not where they want to be yet. They are on the journey. So Knight of Cups says, open your heart, says, be, <sighs> spirit is really highlighting this solar eclipse energy. Um, there may be some very intimate conversations that need to be had. And I want to say that your softness and openness, you're actually kind of um, stepping forward with your vulnerability, leading with your vulnerability in a way. Um, could lead to some 
fresh starts. <laughs> I keep wanting to point at your cards because it's just like, wow, they never cease to amaze me the way it's like they tell it, and then we see it in the pictures. Okay, so as the Knight of Cups, don't close off. If there is a message you've been waiting to send or speak, please do that. If there's a move you've been meaning to make, Spirit is showing me like a chessboard. If any, if any of you know chess, knights move in like this L shape and Spirit is being so punny with L, like the L word. So move in that L shape. Listen, I just work here. Okay, sitting in the past, nine of pentacles. Interestingly enough, nine of pentacles is the single and happy card. It's a great card to have across the board. Um, but it's interesting in this context of everything that Spirit has been saying about partnership, you know, seventh house things, Nine of Pentacles going from that kind of self-sufficient, independent, etc. You might be going through a little bit of a transformation. Um, I want to give you a lot of kudos. You've got a lot of skills, Aries. That's what I see here. Nine of Pentacles. We also have the Nine of Wands in the key position. Um, staying vigilant, not giving up knowing that you're very close to this big outcome, okay? And again, this is a general reading, of course, Aries. So if, it's a, if it was a personal reading, Spirit would be showing me like these very specific things for you, right? But I'm getting a lot of different things for a lot of different Aries. For some of you, it's like, we are on the edge of a breakthrough in this um, startup. Like they're showing me a startup organization. They're also showing me like a, a couple that is in like couples therapy. Like we're on the edge of this big breakthrough and if I can lead a little bit with the vulnerability and if I can, um, it's not letting go of your self-sufficiency. Rude. It's not letting go of your self-sufficiency. It is about inviting somebody else into those deeper parts of you and even into maybe those parts of you that are like parts of you that feel maybe it's hard to let someone close to like the feral part of you or the part of you that struggles and that might be part of what leading with your vulnerability and actually inviting somebody into that part of yourself rather than saying like it's better that you don't experience this aspect of me I know that's just what I'm hearing so you don't need to be so strong all the time for everybody. You are strong. Like you don't need to demonstrate it anymore. Um, and if you would like some help with it, it looks like it's available to you. It looks um, highly available to you. Now I wanna jump to the climate, Four of Cups. <sighs> Four of Cups is a card of, there's a little bit of a worry that you might not see something that is being presented to you as the blessing that it is because it comes dressed in a way that you were not expecting. Be like the Knight of Cups. Very heart open. I mean, naked dude riding a dragon. He's got nothing to hide. And the Knight of Cups isn't afraid to keep dreaming. Very dreamy, open, vulnerable. Okay, if I get hurt. I have a dream. I have a desire. I'm okay if I get hurt. It's not a delirium of like, I will not get hurt on the way to delivering my message to the world or telling this person I really like them or whatever this is. It's not that I won't get hurt. Um, I'm actually open to everything that comes. That's the whole point of being open, right? So Four of Cups would say that maybe there's a little bit of, hey, are you hyper-focused on what is going wrong or could go wrong or has gone wrong before to the point that you might miss out on a fulfilling new experience that is available to you. And even I'm hearing for some of you that there's something that felt like it was gone forever and there might be actually an opportunity to rekindle or to reconnect. When I feel into that, that feels healthy. I'm not talking about your shitty ex. I'm not pers talking about the person who like serial cheated on you or like ghosted or any shit like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone where it was genuinely like, wow, we kind of hit a, a wall or a miscommunication, but I think I understand them or myself or the problem better now. And I feel like we could maybe have a conversation and we could move forward and transform from that. Just what I'm hearing for some of you. Okay. So jump to the present death. 
walking through and closing a door behind you. Now, you don't have to be uh, worried because what are you stepping into as you step through that door? The Empress, abundance, um, luxury, receiving. It's Libra season. Empress is Venus. It's very, it's very Libra and Venusian energy that is in front of you. Now, death, are you willing to kind of walk through uh, the fire? Are you kind of willing to go off of faith in a way where you you know, release and recalibrate. Okay. I used to do relationship by keeping myself in a position of power, whether consciously or unconsciously. I don't want to do that anymore. I actually really want to be loved and allow myself to be, uh, um, allow myself to love and be loved, right? On a deeper level, on a more vulnerable level, on a level that doesn't have to do with um, how we are or are not, even propping each other up. Like, whew, like showing your weaknesses and your challenges and inviting people to be there with you because that's that's when you can really transform that and that's something else that spirit is showing me about this death card is that maybe there's been a part for some of you that you have not wanted to show people um because you think it's bad and like you want to fix it first or something like that and it's like actually love would fix this actually compassionate witness would fix this or begin to unknot this you know what i'm saying some of you, I'm, I'm hearing this, some of you, it would benefit you greatly to, um, or maybe they're showing me this because some of you are already in therapy. Like I'm already exploring my emotions and my vulnerabilities with a safe person. Again, seventh house, one-on-one, -on -one, doesn't have to always be romantic. It's like, wow, I found a really safe therapist to be, to let my guard down in front of and explore what I'm feeling um, and transform it. So I'm hearing that for some of you. The Guidance, Ace of Pentacles, Fresh Start, Carpe Diem. Seize the day, seize the offer, seize the job. Something is coming to you that feels like a great gift. Like, yes, and, and it is, it's the seed, okay? It is the seed, but Spirit is reminding me of Jack and the Beanstalk and being like magic beans. That's what they're saying with this Ace of Pentacles. This is your magic beans. What do you want to grow? It's just the beginning of the month, ideally, when you're hearing this, right? No matter when you're hearing it, this applies. What do you want to grow? You want to grow your money? Do you want to grow a new job? Do you want to grow a new relationship? Do you want to grow new courage? Do you want to grow new creativity? Whatever. There is something that you want, and you have both the seed in the guidance position. So Spirit's telling you this is already either in your hands or on its way. So take that for granted, okay? It's in your hands or it's on its way. Which one is it for you? You can trust your intuition when the answer comes. Do I already have it or is it on its way? Okay, it's on its way, whatever. Now in the future, the Empress, the seed and the birth, right? So what do you need to release death so that Empress, that new birth can happen? And is it you who is going through this rebirth or are you going to receive something are you creating something are you pregnant with something that you're ready to share with the world the sun card sits in the position representing your hopes and fears being really seen really seen for who you really are that's what i'm fucking hearing being seen for who you really are warts and all bumps lumps blah 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 and loving yourself and spirit is saying something really important and poignant which is it really is loving your whole ass self, lumps, bumps, scars, flaws, etc. really is step zero to allowing somebody else to love you that deeply and that fully. And that goes, for, again, for romantic partnerships. That goes to the more that I show my therapist, the actually more they can help me heal. That goes to the more that I show my gifts to the world, the more they can reimburse me and re-gift back to me for what I've given them. What you have to give is desired. Be a little more vulnerable, and I think that you will find that you will be more well-received and well-tended um, to than you might even expect. Looks pretty magical to me, Aries. What do you think? Let me know. Questions, comments, stories, suggestions. It's my birthday this month. I'm very excited. <laughs> I don't know why I'm throwing it in. <laughs> 
I guess because I appreciate you. Thank you for being here, Aries. I appreciate you. Thank you for spending my birthday month with me. Happy early Halloween. And if I don't see you before then, then I hope I'll see you in your mid-October reading. Till then. Bye, Aries. <laughs>